Well, what is going on guys and welcome into the video. Today we are going to discuss six stocks that I bought in the past month that have already blown up big time and I mean like almost 40% in some cases and you won't believe some of the stocks on this list. You only get this mix of stocks all exploding up at the same time during a catastrophic crash. But there is a massive problem. Wall Street just seems intent on destroying anything good in the stock market because a recession is absolutely looming and will be here very soon. Do I really want to buy more and risk that capital? I mean, has all the gains in these stocks been kind of squeezed out and they are set to move back down lower or even make new lows altogether? Or do these stocks have a lot more room to run and are worth continuing to buy? Well, let's find out together right after you gently tap that like button for the good old YouTube algorithm. Now, before we can discuss the problem and where these stocks are headed, and are they still buys at the current prices, more importantly, you need to know the stocks and where and why we were buying them. All right, so let's start with the first stock I added to, which would be Meta, and that should be no surprise there at all. But what is surprising is that I am up a whopping 30% on my buy on November 1st, and I'm up 33% on my buy on November 2nd. So in just under a month, we made buys in the group that are up over 30% in a terrible market on a stock that has just gotten crushed this year. I mean, like Meta is down 65% or so on the year, guys. And I'm up 30 plus percent on two of my biggest buys ever for Meta stock. And I've been buying this one for a long time, but at that price, the market left me no choice but to go big. Meta was the best deal in the stock market, in my opinion, at the time, and it wasn't even close. But the real question now is, is it still the best deal in the market or should you put your money elsewhere? And we will answer that here in just a second. But wait, there is more. We were also buying Google at 90 on November 1st, then 87 on November 2nd, and then $83 on November 3rd for gains of 10%, 14%, and 20% respectively. And yes, the cheaper it got, the more shares I bought, and yes, on that last buy, that is one of the biggest buys ever on Google that I personally made. Now you may be asking, why the heck did you do that, Luke? I mean, did you know it would go up or that some catalyst was coming? Nope, not at all. Unlike other YouTubers and people on TV, I'm not a market timer, nor a guru, nor a genius as they try to portray themselves as. I just use good old valuation and looking at Google, it was trading at its cheapest valuation ever. And I mean ever, guys. Google was not cheaper from a valuation standpoint during the great financial crisis and then during the great recession. It wasn't cheaper during the taper tantrum or the illness crash either. It was trading cheaper than at any other time in history, despite being in a far superior position than it's ever been at and a much better company than it's ever been at any other point in time in history as well. I got it. Meta is in transition, so it makes sense. And that was a riskier buy with more potential downside. But Google gets the same treatment as Meta does? This is why you ignore the noise of all the garbage and all the mic timers and whoever the heck else out there is spewing that stuff. Valuation told me everything I needed to know to confidently pull the trigger. Now, is the valuation still there and cheap enough to keep adding is the question we will answer today. But I told you this list was weird, so let's get weird. Actually, before we get weird, just a reminder that if you wanna see all my buys like these in real time and see the buys of many of our members who have actually done better than I did during the last month, the Cyber Week sale ends tomorrow to get your discounted membership that lasts as long as you stay a member. You also get access to five free courses, my watch list with price targets, tons of lessons and tutorials. We do live weekly Q and A's and you get direct access to me anytime and a ton more. So check out the pinned comment before that sale expires tomorrow. So next up, we have a stock that is not for everyone, but it was right for me. And that would be Neil, which I honestly have not bought in over a year. But I decided to add my biggest single buy ever of Neo at $9.69. And that buy is up a whopping 35% so far. And speaking of Chinese stocks, I also added my biggest single buy ever of Baba at $65 on November 1st as well. And that buy is up 37%. Now to be clear, owning stocks like these is all about position size and risk mitigation. But as both companies have continued to perform in a very difficult environment over there, and the delisting fear that I said would get worked out, looks like it's actually getting worked out, I was willing to increase my risk and buy more shares. Now, Neo and Baba aren't for everyone. I agree completely there. But this next stock may be the one that a lot of you are interested in, and many of you are heavily invested in already, 
and that stock would be the one and the only Tesla stock, which I bought a nice batch of shares just before Thanksgiving at 169, and that was after buying more at 179 just a little while earlier. I got it, some people are predicting 140 or 90 or whatever, but how the heck can you pass up Tesla as these prices is what I had to ask myself, and although the gain is not huge, being up about 15% or so in 10 days is not too shabby either. And if Tesla doesn't do it for you, which I know isn't many of you guys out there, but there are a few people that Tesla just doesn't do it for them, let's change it up again as next up we got DraftKings, which I decided to make a huge single buy at $12 on November 4th, and it is up around 30% already as well. This was a huge average down for me as it was my first buy since last year and the position is getting awfully close to turning green if we get a little bit of a run here and that wouldn't have happened if the stock had not fallen to a point where a big buy could really cut my average down on this stock. But the next question becomes, will I consider buying any more of these six stocks at the current prices since they are up so big and to be honest, the answer is different for each one. So let's take them one at a time and then we will kind of discuss whether they are all primed to go lower or not. Let's just kind of go right in order here, starting with Meta, which I know is controversial and always creates a stir, but my answer is simple. Yes, this price to me, based on my valuation and where I see Meta going long-term, is still a still deal today. Obviously not like it was when it was in the 80s, which I honestly missed, I just got it in the low 90s, but some of our group members got it at that price, but you don't need to be close to the bottom for a stock to still be a good deal and Meta is that in my opinion. I bought a lot of this stock, so I don't need any more. But if Wall Street wants to tempt me, I might not be able to resist. But remember, that doesn't mean it won't go lower, which we will cover here in just a second. So next up, we had Google, and the answer there is yes, absolutely. You're still stealing basically Google right now, in my opinion. So there isn't much to discuss in my mind for me. I just, I don't need to discuss it. It's that easy. Now for Neo and Baba, it's just a little bit different. For me, because position size is the key to owning Chinese stocks, I needed those crazy discounts to justify increasing those position sizes. And they are not on crazy discount like they were before, so I'm not looking to add more unless the price gets crazy again for some stupid reason again. If I didn't have a full position, I might feel differently, but for me and my situation and plan, the price now isn't one that tips me at this stage, and I want to see lower prices than my previous buys to really get me to kind of consider it again on those stocks. But that's not the case for Tesla at all. I mean, anything under $200 for me is a no-brainer, so I will happily keep buying in this price range no problem at all, as I will continue to add Tesla shares on any weakness like this. But I cannot say the same for DraftKings, though. Now, is it too expensive? I mean, probably not. But it's not a Google or a Meta or a Tesla. It is still a stock that is not profitable yet, so it is still closer to the kind of the speculative side of the spectrum than the safe side. So position size is key to me. I just can't build out a big position in a company like that. And since I already have all the shares that I want, I see no reason to add any more and certainly not at a higher price than I just averaged down with. Again, kind of like Neil and Baba, if I didn't have a full position, I might think differently, but I do. So that's kind of where I stand on it. But does all this really matter if all these stocks are going lower like everyone is predicting? I mean, this chart says this and that line says that, and my Gucci Porsche Hugo Boss line shows 69, so Tesla will go to 139 as a result, right? That's all great, except nobody knows where the market is going, and since I don't buy the indexes, I don't care where it's going anyways. The market will bottom is all that I know. Maybe it already has bottom, maybe a lower bottom is coming, nobody knows. But the only thing I know for sure is that all these stocks will actually bottom at different times, sometimes by months before and after the market bottoms. I know that for sure. And I know that I have stocks that bottomed in May or June and are up 100% from those bottoms and didn't get anywhere close in October or November when some of the stocks on my list that we just discussed hit new bottoms and there will be stocks that won't see a bottom until next year. And maybe they all hit new lows next year or maybe none of the stocks I own make new lows next year. The reality is nobody freaking knows and I don't care about it and I don't need to time any bottom to make significant returns in the long run. That has proven true over the history of the stock market. I just need to not be the idiot trying to time the bottom who misses the next bull run because the new bottom, based on the pokey Gucci Taco Tuesday line, the price of cheese on Thursday, that whole curve hasn't inverted yet. Therefore, he is stuck waiting and drawing new charts and graphs that show he is right. He needs to keep waiting. That guy is guaranteed to miss the bottom. Bottom line, buy when the valuation makes sense. Just DCA at those undervalued levels, which for many stocks, 
They will be at those levels for some time, so keep on following your plan and ignoring all the noise and all the market timers out there. So hopefully this was helpful. And if you don't know how to get a price target or how to do a valuation and want a step-by-step -step process for doing that, building wealth, and you want direct access to me and much more, remember to check out the pinned comment down below to become a member and at least look at everything you get. And click this video here for the stocks I'm still buying in this market and click here for exactly what I'm doing to make huge money in this market. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.